Some people will walk and more will drive. It's, it's optional. But you can't drive up to the gate because the, the actual lane into Cherry Fields is, is, is uh, blocked no. up. So we, we can drive as far as the entrance gate and stop there. But uh, we won't delay too long here and I'll have a bit more to say when we get out to Cherry Fields. Uh, where you are here is the, you're right in the middle of Callan Workhouse, or what remains of it. About a third of the original building remains. And that building there right behind it, that was the boys' section of Callan Workhouse. And you can see there that there's a lot more of it that's gone now, and the more of it at the back. But about a third of it is still in, intact. It's quite, it's quite a complex, but uh, we won't be looking around that today. So, uh, what we are going to do is we walk out to Cherry Fields, um, which was people that died here in the death house and had no body to claim them, they were buried in Cherry Fields, known as the Pauper Graveyard. So, Callan Workhouse here is one of 130 workhouses that were built in Ireland in the, the late 1830s uh, into 1840. And they were built to do something about the chronic poverty that was in Ireland at the time. And uh, there were several attempts made by successive governments in the early 19th century after the act of union between Ireland and Great Britain to come to, to, come to uh, terms with poverty. And finally it was decided to solve it by the, the workhouse system. And to implement this act, the country was divided into poor law unions. And each union was to have a workhouse. And there were originally 130 of them, and later 150 as a result of the crisis caused by the Great Famine. Sorry, 163. Callan Union here was situated partly in County Kilkenny and partly in County Tipperary. And uh, it comprised an area with a population of roughly 42,000 people. And it was contracted for on the 29th of May, 1840, and was completed in 1841. It's hard to imagine such a huge complex was built in such a short time, but it, but it was. And... Uh, <clears throat> The entire complex is situated at the south end of the town here and it covered an area of six and a quarter acres. And it cost 5,500 to build it, just imagine, and 1,140 to fit out. So it was uh, it, hard to imagine the, the figures at the time. Uh, it was built to accommodate 600 people. Uh, and the first admissions took place on the 25th of March, 1842. And there were 33 poor law guardians. They were elected from various area, areas of the union and they had overall responsibility. It functioned quite well in its early years, but it was overwhelmed by the catastrophe of the Great Famine, 1845 to 50. And uh, at the height of the famine, the workhouse here, which was built to hold 600 people, it had something, it said 2,102 people in it. So it was grossly overpopulated, and as a result, there was a huge amount of people died in it. And between 1841 and 1851, a total of 3,515 people died here, which is more than the population of Callum. And these virtually all died during the years 1846 to 50. After the famine years then, this place, uh, it returned back to a more normal level of operation and it continued to function into the 1920s. And in 1922, during the Irish Civil War, it was garrisoned by Free State troops. And it was later sold to private individuals and public bodies. And today, the Camp Hill community owns quite a bit of it here. And this section here, which was the uh, administration block, 
When you came into the workhouse, that's the first building you came into, where you'll be processed. And that's the county council offices for Callan at the moment. And then once you were processed and admitted, you, you were sent to the wards. The biggest problem with the workhouses were the breaking up of the families. Uh, the women were sent to one section, the men to another, and children over two were sent to the children's section. But this building right here was the boys' section, and it's still quite intact. So that's the main reason people hated to come in here, because the families were broken up, and the chances are you never might see one another again. So uh, <clears throat> that's a very short synopsis of the history of Cannon Workhouse. And anybody that died here and had nobody to claim them, which was uh, most of the people during the famine years, they were brought out to the famine graveyard in Cherryfield, often six at a time. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a walk of about a mile and a quarter or so and people that would like to walk, please walk, and anyone that would like to drive, they can drive and park out near it there and then walk the last bit of it, which will include myself, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so we'll, 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 we'll make a start. So, I think, I think everyone has a right. Right. So we, we, are, we are now in Cherryfield, this is Cherryfield, the, 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 the pauper, known as the pauper graveyard. And the most striking aspect of the cemetery here is its sheer starkness. There are no elaborate marble tombstones, ornate Celtic crosses, indeed there is not a single tombstone uh, of any description in the entire cemetery here, and there never was. It is the final resting place of the forgotten, <coughs> hidden away in a remote place. How many lie buried here we do not know for certain, but a figure of about 5,000 is estimated to be about correct. And who were those forgotten ones? Mainly they are the men, women and children who died in Callan Workhouse and had no one to claim them. Most would have died during the Great Famine, 1845 to 50, and we're told that often up to six at a time were brought out here for burial. Moreover, we do not know their names. While most of the workhouse records exist and are housed in the archives of the, the archives section of Kilkenny County Library, the vital books of admission and discharge, they disappeared a long time ago, like they did from nearly every workhouse in the country. And those books would have recorded the names of people admitted <coughs> into the workhouse and the names of those who left and the names of those who died. We know that 3,515 people died in Callan workhouse during the famine years, but we have no names. They were just interned out here and forgotten. In fact, Cherryfield itself was almost totally forgotten after it was closed about 1922. I well remember coming down here many, many years ago to a place of mud and bushes, its walls broken down and cattle breaking in from the adjoining fields. It truly was a dismal place. my notes together. Anyway, it truly was a dismal, a dismal place 
Uh, in the early 1980s, Callan Heritage Society, which was founded in 1982, it began to highlight the state of Cherryfield and initiated moves to restore some dignity to it. A plaque was erected, that's the plaque on the pier just behind you there, you saw coming in. A plaque was erected and unveiled on the Feast of All Souls, November the 2nd, 1986, and a great big crowd attended here. The boreen into it on that particular day was a sea of mud and water. A FOSS scheme under the aegis of Callan Enterprise Group, run by the late Mrs. Alice Lennon, subsequently restored the graveyard, erected an altar and a cross, and repaired the walls and the boreen leading into it. Over a thousand people attended the unveiling of a monument, that's the monument right here, the Afton Monument. Over a thousand people attended the unveiling of a monument erected just inside the entrance and it was commissioned by the Irish Worldwide Famine Organisation, AFRI, and it was unveiled on Good Friday 1994. And A.D. Roach of the, Church, the Chernobyl Children's Appeal Fund, she performed the unveiling ceremony. Now, not alone were these people forgotten by the civil authorities, <clears throat> they were also forgotten by the church. And the first mass that was ever celebrated in Cherryfield took place on the 31st of May, 1996. And it was celebrated by Father Joseph Delaney, who was then PP of Callum, assisted by several other priests. And the Church of Ireland rector of the time from Kells, Reverend Dennis Sands, read the epistle. And a huge crowd attended. <coughs> that, my friends, is a, a brief history of the pauper graveyard here. Today it looks well, and we sincerely thank everyone who helps to keep it uh, in a lovely state. Especially J.J. Bailey, a local man here, he cuts the grass regularly for us, and he's cut it recently, so it's, it's looking very well. And uh, we'd like to thank everyone who helped in any way to restore the graveyard here. And at this stage now, we'd like to call on my good friend, Mick Dawson, who was a great supporter every year, never lets us down here at the, this special event, to play uh, a few uh, laments and other songs for us, please. Mick. I won't delay you too long now, don't worry. <laughs> you want anyway, um, I'm going to play a tune called Tom Shinnacula. I'm now asleep, which might be appropriate.
go, be next. You feel like another one, eh? What do you think? Okay. Okay, please. Thanks. going to read a poem by um, Josephine Fitzgerald. It's called Cherryfield. You will not see their names carved upon a stone or flowers laid at their feet. But as you walk up that long boreen, the wild primrose smells so sweet. Within these gates of Cherryfield, where the wild blossom softly waves, lie men and women and children in their lonely, unmarked graves. So when you visit Cherryfield, please tread softly on the clay, for who can know with an unmarked grave where a sacred body lay? Now a plaque's been placed upon the wall to remind us of their plight. Just one ave, please say for them as you go to sleep each night. So we just we just say um, three prayers in memory of the people who who are buried here. So um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Let's pass the power of all women, and bless the fruit of the dying of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, never shall be, or without any Um Thank everybody for coming this evening, and uh, it's a great crowd. 
considering the weather and everything we've had of late. And thank you all for coming and a safe journey back again to the workhouse or wherever. Okay, thank you all. And thanks for arranging, Joe.